Okay, uh, this is Solid Mechanics, um, the January 2020 exam, question two. Uh, I'll look at just question two, part one for now, and then we'll come back and look at question two, part two. And uh, you might just want to take a screenshot of that um, question, because I'm going to move it out of the way now and start working on it. Okay, so it's about... Um, this is question two, part one. Uh, it's about a pipe uh, which we know is two meters long and it's got a 240 millimeter outside diameter. Uh, again, like I usually do, I'm going to convert that straight away into meters. That's 0 0.24 meters. And it's got a 10 millimeter wall thickness. Uh, which means that inside diameter there's 10 millimeters here 10 millimeters there so it's it's 20 millimeters less so that's 0.22 meters inside diameter I think I'll just make a note 10 millimeter wall thickness two meters long uh, that's sort of into the page in this direction I guess the pipe overall looks you know, uh, like that, um, where that length there is two meters. And it's carrying a 640 kilonewton centric axial load, uh, 640 kilonewtons. Uh, on the di uh, I was about to say it doesn't say whether it's uh, tension or compression, but it does. It's on the diagram. Uh, so that's acting in compression, 640 kilonewtons. And so the question says, part A, calculate the change in length of the pipe. Um, sorry, this is going a bit out of focus. Just see if I can refocus it. Yeah. Uh, I guess if I try and keep my hand out of the way then that's good but um, we'll just have to see what happens um, the camera's not perfect okay um, and we're told Young's modulus is 73 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio is 0.33 so we got that information too uh, next we want to calculate the change in length of the pipe so that's part A um, this is really a stress strain question. If we calculate a strain, we'll be able to calculate a change in length. So let's just straight away write down our stress strain um, formulae. Stress is force over area. Strain is change in length divided by original length. And um, stress is Young's modulus times strain. And we know some of those things. We don't yet know an area, um, so I'm going to start by calculating that. I'll say the area is the um, outside, the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle here. So that's pi. Uh, I must remember that it's radius I need, so that's. Uh, 0 0.12 is half of that 0 0.24 minus the area of the inner circle pi r squared again and this time 0 0.11 is half of that 0 0.22 and I can put all of that into a calculator uh, so we say 0 0.12 squared minus 0 0.11 squared multiply the whole thing by pi and that comes out to be 7.225 time or 7 point I'll call it 7.23 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared sorry square meters uh, okay so that's good so now I can go back to what I was doing that's kind of a side note and now I can calculate stress in the pipe is force over area which is going to be 640,000 uh, that's the force we were given divided by 7.23 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, and that comes out to be uh, 
I've got 88573185 point something. Uh, that's 88.6 megapascals. Uh, good. So that's the stress. Next, I can use um, stress is Young's modulus times strain. So therefore, strain is stress divided by Young's modulus, uh, which is 88.6 times 10 to the 6 divided by 73 times 10 to the 9. And that comes out to be 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3. And then finally, we can say strain is delta x divided by x. So therefore, delta x, the change in length, is strain times the original length, which is 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 2 meters, uh, which is 2.43 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, uh, which is 2.43 millimeters. So that's how much the pipe changes in um, length. Next, let's move on. That's that bit done. Uh, we can say, OK, let's look at part B and uh, move my hand out the way and see if I can get this to focus a bit. OK, maybe it'll, sorry about this, technical difficulties. Uh, maybe it'll stay in focus or maybe it won't, but we'll keep adjusting it as we go along. So next we want to know the change in outer diameter. Um, this should be relatively easy. Uh, we can say uh, Poisson's ratio nu, I think it's nu, I can never remember what Greek letter that is, but we'll say it's nu, um, is 0.33, that's given in the question, and that is a lateral strain, the sort of strain not in the direction of the force, divided by longitudinal strain. The strain in the direction of the force, and therefore lateral strain equals 0.33 times longitudinal strain. We've just calculated the longitudinal strain. That's 0.33 times um, 2.43 times 10 to the minus 3. Ah, uh, no, sorry, 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3. I must just be careful with what I'm pulling from further back in the question. And that equals 4.00 times 10 to the minus 4. Uh, and it's a strain, so it doesn't have any units. So I can leave that as it is. Um, so the change in the outside diameter uh, well, I guess what we could do is say um, delta x again equals uh, strain times x. In this case, we're looking at the um, diameter. So this is our x and we're looking at lateral strain because it's the strain across the pipe. Uh, and the pipe grows ever so slightly in, in that direction, expands outwards under compression, and uh, that expansion will be delta x. So we can say it's 4.00 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by uh, 0.24 meters, which equals 9.61 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. 96 microns, but I think I'll just leave that as 9.61 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. And that is the change in outer diameter. Uh, we can go on and do part C. 
which says find the change in wall thickness. Well, if we find the change in inner diameter and the chain, and we know the change in outer diameter, we're starting to get to the change in wall thickness. So delta x on the inner diameter is epsilon times uh, the original inner diameter, uh, which is 4.00 times 10 to the minus 4 times 0 0.22. which is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. Um, so the it's worth perhaps drawing things here. This is a slightly tricky conceptual point. The original um, measurements were 0 0.24, 0 0.22, 0 0.01, and 0 0.01. The wall thicknesses plus the internal diameter give us the external diameter. Now we've got uh, 0.24 plus that value. I'm going to call that uh, dx outer diameter. This is 0.22 plus this value, delta x inner diameter, and then these are the unknown wall thicknesses, w. Um, so I'll just move on to a new sheet. What we can say is um, 0.24 plus delta x o d equals 0.22 plus delta x i d plus 2 w. Um, what I'm saying with that equation is that the length of this arrow here must equal the length of that arrow, that, that set of three arrows there. Um, I can write down what all these values are except for w, so I'm going to have one equation with one unknown. Uh, and that will give me uh, 2w equals 0 0.02 plus 9.61 times 10 to the minus 5 minus 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 5. And the problem here is that... Uh, we need a lot of decimal places. There are slightly smarter ways of doing the calculator work, so we don't have to work with six decimal places. Um, I guess I can half that. Uh, 0.01, 0.00405. Um, so the change in wall thickness is the difference between that and the original thickness. Uh, which is 0.01005 minus 0.01, and that will then give us a more sensible number, which is 4.05 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, 4.05 microns. And that, I think, is my final answer for that part of the question. Uh, and that's question two a two part one done. Uh, I'm going to stop this recording and do question two part two as a separate recording. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a second. But I'll just leave it up there as a 
a teaser for what we're going to do next.